I got my spars cut to the length that I need them now and I'm setting up to glue them together and then um, I'm going to staple them just because I don't have enough clamps for all this and that'll help speed along the process and then I can just get these done, set them aside and then get started on sanding my ceiling. Um, these are just one by twos and I also, uh, for where my hatch is going, I got oak. It's a harder wood. Um, since that's a connection point, most people generally put a harder wood on their on their one that their hatch will attach to. So I will get started on this and then when I get it done, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I've gotten all my spars done there. And now I've moved on to working on the ceiling here. And I got that cut to the proper length there. And remember this is that this is that bending plywood that has all the grains going the same way so it bends real easy. And I'm going to sand this down and then put the mix back on it and varnish it. Uh, but before I, before I varnish it, I'm going to put some tape down on the ends. Uh, that way it doesn't inhibit the glue when I go to put it on the lip of the teardrop for the ceiling. So uh, that's where I'm at and I'll just keep on going on here. I've put my final spar varnish coat on this and uh, I've removed my tape here and so we're going to let this dry up and then um, I'm going to map out uh, where I'm going to put out where I'm going to put my spars. I have my uh, moon roof that I'm going to stick on here and then also um, my max air fan that's going to go in there. So I got to frame those and I'll show you that and then um, we're going to start putting those in place and see put them exactly where we want them. I started building the framing for my max air vent fan and uh, what I started with here is um, my spars are 60 inches long so I marked off 30 inches and then uh, in the manual it says you need a 14 by 14 inch uh, hole for this to go in so I made these uh, 14 inches and then I clamped them down okay I'll just show you real quick how I got um, my 14 inches um, I went to the 7 inch mark on my square here and put it on the middle mark that I made previously like so and then I just marked here and then 14 inches down there. Did that on both sides so that gets me nice and square. Alright, I'm going to start putting these together now. I'm just going to throw some glue on them. Don't need a whole lot. Real quick. Alright, we got that. Take these. Now we're just going to clamp them. I've got these clamped down now. And I'm just going to throw in some uh, one, one and a quarter inch staples in them to hold them. Alright, that should hold that pretty good. So next up is taking the Craig jig there and we're going to put holes on the ends of them there. So when we go to mount them here, um, we can screw back into this wood here and that'll keep this secure. So that's what I'm about to do and when I get that done I'll show you. Okay I just did a dry fit and everything came out great, 14 inches all the way around. So now. We're going to take this out, throw some, throw some glue on the ends, alright, good and square. Sure. Clamp is tight. All right. And that guy is in there. So when we go to frame the sunroof, we're going to do it pretty much the same way as we did with the uh, fan vent. 
The only difference is gonna be on the ends here, pretty much. Um, I will have to make uh, some gussets there for the curves right here. I'll just have to make some gussets that I'll have to screw into this the boards here. And um, that'll pretty much take care of the sunroof. Okay, so I'm test fitting my sunroof here. And um, what I did is I just took the spars and clamped them and then these this piece is actually gonna be moved underneath here, but I just I put it here so I could clamp it to keep the spacing so this doesn't fall through here. Um, and I lined up that, that way I know I'm in the middle. So I was just marking this to see if I like where it's at, if I need to change it. Um, also, since this is on a little bit of a curve here, I had to bevel these these cuts um, right here. So this goes like that. And uh, so I'll figure out how I want to uh, put all this together so I can toss it in here just like it is. All right, I'm, I'm about to put my ceiling on here. And uh, I had to sand this down a little bit to get it flush. It was sticking up a little bit. And I'm also gonna have to drill a hole in my ceiling um, in a couple places right there so that wire can stick up through the ceiling on that lip and also um, for my light switches and those holes will go um, on the edges there where we didn't put varnish so that's what I'm about to do and then hopefully tomorrow um, everything will be set up and I can just kind of throw this ceiling up here real quick so I'm going to start putting my ceiling on here and uh, I put a little bit of glue on and I'm going to spread this out like so. I don't want it to be so thick that it squeezes out a lot because I don't want it to come out underneath the um, underneath the rail. I got my first uh, panel up there. Uh, went in pretty pretty good so far. Um, started raining on me outside so I had to pull it back in but um, that's what it looks like so far. And now I'll move on to my next one. Now I made this stop right here so it'll, it'll hide behind this so you won't see this seam at all. Okay, I've temporarily thrown this up here. And uh, so what I want to do now is I'm just gonna drill a hole here and then I'm gonna stick my wires through. Okay, we're going to throw a little bit of glue on this lip. Um, not not too much, just enough to get good coverage there, but you don't want it to squeeze out onto this panel. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I've got that glue on there. Now we're going to put our panel up. Okay, now I'm going to pull my wires, the rest of my wires through. All right, now we'll just finish stapling the rest of this up. Okay, so I've got the ceiling in now, and uh, still need to 
Um, I got a little bit of a gap here, um, so I'm gonna have to fix that eventually. But this is what we look like so far. And here's the top. We got our wire sticking through here and over there. And um, I'm gonna mark out now where I wanna put my spars. And then I'll show you that. Before I actually start to secure down my spars here, um, what I wanted to do was go ahead and drill the holes for where all my wires are going to be running um, through my spars. Um, you know, like that. I figured it'd be easier to go ahead and do it now than get these in here and then try to drill. Um, and right here at uh, 32 inch mark is where we're going to have, I'm actually going to have a box on the front of this and I'm actually going to house all of my electronics, my battery and, and um, converter and all that up here. So, um, what I've done is I have gotten, uh, kind of wrote everything down just, just to kind of map it out. That way I don't forget everything. Um, you know, I'm going to have a 110 volt and a 12 volt plug in, in the galley. And then also um, the 12 volt light needs to run through there. Uh, the fridge that I eventually want to buy is going to, can run off both 110 and 12 volt. And then we got the interior lights and, you know, the lights and the shelves and, uh, everything like that so I just kind of map this out I'm kind of going to kind of draw out through this um, where I want everything um, before I go ahead and start putting these down so I'll get that done and I'll show you when it's done I've started drilling some of my holes for my wires there as you can see this is what we got going on here this is for my uh, my traveler wires for my three-way switches that's going to run over there that side and then we also have this here which is for my dome light right here so um, I think you can see where we're headed with that and uh, I'll keep on mapping these out and cutting these holes I've been putting my uh, spars on now and uh, I have been using this tight bond too um, but what I found is when I put this on the roof or the ceiling there um, there might be you know a, a sixteenth of an inch or you know a real small gap and this stuff is the viscosity of it's pretty thin so I, I'm switching over to um, this PL premium 3 PL premium 3 here and um, it goes on a lot thicker and um, what I'm what I'm thinking is that'll help fill up those voids um, where that gets missed by this glue. So I'm switching over to this and uh, keep on moving along here. I figured I'd show you what I got going on with this last spar here. And I got a little bit of an issue going on and is, um, never mind, I was this, I was cutting up too high. So um, that'll be hidden so we're not worried about that. But anyway, so if I put this down here like so, um, as you can see here, that gives me an issue of my roof sliding uh, underneath that. So um, that gives me a couple things I can do would be to put that down first, like so, and then slide this in. If I do that, that would make the outside of this, because that'll be where the roof line is at, right here. Um, that puts that too far back, because if you see, if I go to put this up like that, it creates that bend on it, and that's just not gonna work. So that leaves me to leave it out that far. And if I do that, that exposes this right here to this to this spar here. You can see my that's my spar. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do is epoxy the bottom side of this spar when it's in there. So that is waterproofed and water sealed and then I think I also want to put this up before I put the spar in 
and put epoxy along this line here so that water seals that and keeps that up and then what I'll do after that's all done when I'm spraying it I'll spray bed liner spray up underneath here too to cover this so I think that's the best wrap I can do for right now so anyways I just kind of figured I'd show you how that's working out um, maybe could have been a little bit better but we'll work with what we got all right I have pretty much got all my spars done except the bottom one and um, right now I'm waiting I got that with the epoxy that I had mentioned earlier and then also what we're doing is I kept that piece of one and five eighths inch that we cut off the middle board and it sat in there like like so now what we're gonna do here is, this is the one and five eighths inch piece that we had cut off of the middle board when we were making the sidewalls and now what we're going to do with this is it goes something like like this and what we're going to do is cut this in pieces so they fit in between in between the spars and we're going to attach them to this outside wall here and what that's going to do is create um, uh, some stability in between my spars and then also it creates um, a thicker surface to mount our roof on when we go to staple it on. So I'm going to start getting uh, cutting on these and then I'll show you when it's done. Okay, I've been putting these in here now and um, what I was doing was I was measuring, because this is one long piece of board, you know. So I was measuring from here to here. And then, then I'd have to come, and since this was one long piece, I'd have to make this cut here to cut out this spar, and then try to get this to fit in, and everything. And um, that was a lot of, you know, up and down, measuring, back and forth. And so um, I'm going to try something else different on this other side and see if it works a little bit better, if I can't make my work go a little bit faster. And uh, so I'll set, set up over here, and I'll show you that. I've set up for this side over here now, and what I did is I just took my uh, piece of board that I cut out here, and I just clamped it to the outside. Now I can just come here, make my marks where I need them, take this over to the uh, the miter saw, and just cut all those out real quick instead of up and down taking measurements and uh, wasting a little bit of time. So hopefully this works out and is a lot faster, and I will let you know when it's I'm over here on the miter saw now. And this is the marks that we made. Um, this is like in between, this is a spar right here. So I need to cut this end here. And then I just transposed the line on this side. And then for um, making sure I got the correct bevel, I just take this and then line it up like that and then make my cut. So it's working out pretty good, definitely a lot faster. I'm moving right along here as opposed to I was on the other side. So. Um, I ran into another problem and uh, on these and I'll once I get them all cut and up there I'll, I'll show you what it is and what I'm going to do to remedy it. Alright I'm going to show you how, how I'm doing these uh, two pieces that have the wires coming up from the sidewall. Um, I'm going to make a little notch right here. I laid this down in here like this. That way I know where, where it goes. So when this sits so when this sits up like so this wire will actually be under it and can come this way so that's what I'm doing on these and uh, I'll notch those out and then I'll show you um, what else I'm gonna have to do on these so I've got most of these up now and uh, got them glued and stapled in but if you notice here on this on the sides on the profile that they all have about an eighth of an inch uh, over there and I got to thinking I was like man how was I off on all of those and my ceiling here is quarter inch bending plywood and if you go back and you watch the uh, making the sidewall video 
when I cut out this piece of one and five eighths inch um, off my middle wall, I use a eighth inch up cut bit. And what that did is made this an eighth of an inch off. What I needed to do, since I am using quarter inch plywood, some people use eighth inch uh, birched for their ceilings. Um, I needed to use my quarter inch up cut bit and that would have made these perfectly flush with my exterior wall. So that's the mistake that I made uh, depending on what you're using for your ceiling, whether it's an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, um, that would be the cut you need to make on this when you go to cut out that on your middle wall. I forgot to mention how I'm going to fix that. So I'm going to take my, my router bearing bit and then I'm going to make it to where this bearing here sits on this outer exterior wall and then that'll cut all this flush. So that's how I'm going to fix these being an eighth of an inch up too high.